Thank you very much. All right. Yesterday I thought was a nice day. All right. I think most of you uh, learned something about percentages and discounts, right? Um, and hopefully a little bit about your calculator. All right. If anybody is having any questions, now's the time to ask about that. Does anybody have any questions on uh, this work here for percent of change or for uh, the word problems? Any particular questions or everything was good? All right, man, that's awesome. All right, now what I want to do is we do have a lot of new vocabulary today. So what I want to do is I need everybody to flip back now and we are looking at 1, 6, I believe. Yes, yeah, so I want everybody to, to look on uh, section 1-6. Put that notability real quick. And then let me go through this with you. All right, like I said, I was having technical difficulty today, so I didn't get it recorded. And if you'll notice, there's a lot of worksheets. However, all right, the problems are very easy. All right, the problems are very easy. Now, again... In this case, right here, all right, in order to continue, you have to know some vocabulary. All right, and I'm going to try to explain the vocabulary so it makes sense, all right, and then um, the questions will be easy. The first thing up here, all right, you have to know what a relation means, all right, and again, you can just highlight this however you like it, but a relation is simply a set of ordered pairs. So in sixth grade and fifth grade, when I first started teaching you about plotting points, you didn't really know that that was called a relation. All right, whenever you graph points, you're talking about a relation. All right, now, some relations are special, and if a relation is special, then it is called a function. All right, which we will talk to a lot this year about functions. But right now, I'd like to go through some of the other vocabulary. All right, and it says this. It says that a relation um, represents or can be re represented by a set of ordered pairs, a table, a graph, or a mapping. All right, so those are all the different ways in which you can, uh, you can write a set of ordered pairs. Now, the mapping is the only one that we really don't do anymore, all right? Mapping is really old school, all right? Even before I was in high school, I didn't really do mapping, all right? So it's really old. But nonetheless, we're still just going to introduce it, all right? I'm not going to put it on a test. It's not on the SAT. It's not on the ACT. So we don't have anything to worry about. It's just for your own general knowledge, all right? So now, a mapping would look like this right down here. This is considered a mapping. Notice, all right, it's just written differently than the what? The table. This is how we did things last year. We gave you a table, all right, and then you took those numbers and you plotted them on a graph. All right, you did the X first and then the Y. Well, I know you know that. All right, so those are all the four different ways of looking at it. You can look at it as an ordered pair, table, graph, or mapping. Is everybody with me on that? And we're not really going to study mappings, all right? But in this case, I think you have the general idea of what they all are now, all right? Now, the next thing that's really important on this lesson is this. Um, it says the set of first numbers of the ordered pair is the domain. All right? It's the domain. All right? Now, the domain is also considered just the x coordinate. The second number is called the range, which is the y values. All right? So again, up here now, I'm just highlighting, all right? You, you do however you see fit to make sure you understand that vocabulary. Now, how did I used to remember domain and range? I used to remember that the domain and the range are written alphabetically, 
D comes before R, and X comes before what? Y. Therefore, the domain refers to the X coordinates, and the range refers to the what? Y coordinate. Is everybody with me on this? Very easy. All right. Now, what I want to do is I just want to quickly show you, all right, the relation that they made up. Here is the relation right here, guys. There's three points in their relation. All right. Now, if you want to write it as a table, here is how you're doing the table, guys. All right, it's very basic. You can look at that. All right, and see what I'm getting at. All the x coordinates are listed first, and the y coordinates are listed what? Second. Second. I don't really think I need to talk to you about graphing points. I feel like everybody knows how to graph points. The only thing I will say to you for you is you go left and right for the x, and you go what? Up and down for the y. And the x goes first, and then the y. Everybody happy with that so far? All right. Now, on a mapping, all right? This, like I said, is really old school, and I'll just say it once. The x coordinates, 1, 0, 3. Then you put the y coordinates, 1, 2, negative 2. Usually they're written in alpha, or not alphabetical, but numerical num uh, order. All right, usually they're written in numerical order, but they didn't find that necessary to do it. The other thing you don't do is you don't repeat numbers. All right, and we'll give you an example of that. So to do a mapping, 1 to 1. Pretty common sense, right? Zero to two, and three negative two. Right, it's just a different way of listing the ordered pairs. Is everybody with me on that? All right, just different ways of doing it. All right, I'm not really gonna do mapping with you. All right, but we're definitely gonna do a table. We're definitely gonna do ordered pairs, and we're definitely gonna do graphing. All right? Now, just to practice real quick, all right? So now you're going to express that relation as a table, a graph, and a mapping. Let's see if I've done a great job. Give you one minute. Ready, go. Well, one minute. Try to do all of them. I'm going to put it on pause. Again, just do me a favor on this. All right, all you're doing is just check to see how you did. If you're doing this correctly, then you're 80% done. All right, it's really that easy. Sometimes it looks difficult because of the vocabulary. But if you know the vocabulary, it's very simple, all right? So if you're going to do it as a table, you would say negative 2, 3, 4, negative 1, 3, 3. Is everybody good with that? And then the x would be negative 2, 3, 4, negative 1. How many 3s? 1. Only 1. Negative wow. 2 maps to negative 1. 3 maps to 3, and 4 also maps to what? Three. To 3. And then we'll plot the points, negative 2, negative 1, 3, 3, and 4, 3. Everybody good with that? Yep. Domain, D. The domain is negative 2, 3, 4. The range negative one comma three. Yes, everybody happy with that explanation? Very good, right? Does everybody agree it's very simple? Like I said, it looks hard sometimes because of the vocabulary. Quickly. Yeah, generally that's what you do. All right, they didn't, but I think that's a mistake. All right, um, does it matter though, really? No, you don't get something marked wrong. So it's right. Yes, right, exactly. All right, now let's move on, all right, to the next one that's super important. All right, super, super important. All right, so now we're going to start graphing things, and the graphs are going to be a little bit more difficult sometimes. All right, so I want to talk to you about this. Um, the value of the variable in the relation that is subject to choice is called the independent variable. And I'll make more sense of that to you in a second. The variable with a value that is dependent on the value of the independent variable is called the dependent variable. All right? Did you? All right, that's perfect, and I don't have to tell you much. All right? Now, in my 
uh, situation. What I want to do is this year we're going to talk about relations that will have uh, they'll have multiple variables, not just one. All right. So in chapter three, we're going to start dealing with lines and graphs, and you're going to have to be able to deal with multiple variables. Now, the horizontal line we say is the what x. And the vertical is considered the what? Is considered the y. All right? So time is what, in this case, is what you enter in. And what you get out is the what? Is the height. So now listen to how I finally figured this out or finally learned it. The height depends upon the time. Do you agree with me? So in this case, the x coordinate can be anything. And we call that the independent. X can be anything it wants. But as soon as you pick a value for x, y is going to depend on whatever value of x you picked. Does that make sense, guys? So x is the independent, and y is the what? Dependent. All right? In other words, in this example number two, what is the independent variable? Time. What's the dependent? Price. Price. That's how simple it is. It's all right. It's always that way. Always. 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 And domain is also x, and range is also. So what? She's making a good point here. There's lots of ways to call things. All right, the x could be the independent. It could also be called the domain. It can also be called the x values. All right, so there's multiple ways of looking at things. You unfortunately have to know them all. All right. Now, I want to talk about this graph right here. All right, and, and someone's got to describe to me what happens. All right, if you were to look at that, and it says the independent variable is time, and the dependent variable is height. The football starts out on the ground when it is kicked. It gains an altitude until it reaches a maximum height, and then it loses altitude until it falls to the ground. You're supposed to get that information just by the graph. Do I agree with that? If somebody told you you're kicking a football, right, the football started where? On the ground. On the ground, because its height is what? Zero. Yeah. When you kick the ball, hopefully it goes what? Up. Up right and it goes up and then eventually it has to what go down. go down all right and then finally it does what Drops. hits the ground perfect that is what you are describing there and everybody is going to have to take a look at a graph and describe what the situation is all right and some people think they have to be exactly right you have to be exactly right no you can see it a little bit different than me and that's okay all right. So when I ask you about number uh, example two, what's the independent again? Time. And the dependent is the price. And we're dealing with stock, right? Now, in this case, we're talking about the price of a stock. All right. So someone explain to me what's going on in this picture? Um, the price increases, right? Um, and then it decreases again, and then it increases, and then it decreases. That's exactly correct. Exactly correct. It's not a bad stock. Right? It's not a bad stock. Do you want to tell me a little bit about what you know about the stock market? Why would that, why would a stock go up and down, up and down? Tell me. Um, it depends on, um, I don't know a whole lot, but it depends on like how much is being bought and how much is being paid. So what's a good company, do you think? A good company would be something that's... Like right now in the, uh, in the oh, business uh, world. Uh, probably Amazon. Amazon. Amazon, that's exactly Amazon. right. Amazon was a good company and, uh, and Apple was a good company, right? All right. And again, let's, let's briefly, because this is how I want you to kind of be able to tell me a story. All right, so let's say we're talking about, since you mentioned Amazon, let's say you're talking about Amazon. All right, tell me a story about their stock. All right, where did it start out? 
It started out high or low? Uh, lower. Right. It started out. So when Amazon first went to the market, they sold their stock, right? And this is what they initially, listen to what I'm saying, this is what they initially sold their stock for. And then what happened? Their stock value went up. Why, did it, why do you think it would go up, though? The company is doing much better. Because it's doing what? Selling products, right? So it sold a bunch of things, all right? And it made money, correct? Now, why would it go down? you got to tell me a story about why it might go down. Maybe they got in a, a bad spot where the eBay started. Wow, that's very impressive, very impressive. All of a sudden, they get competition from eBay. So now instead of going to Amazon, people might be going to what? eBay. eBay, so they, people might not be spending as much money on Amazon. And then what happens? Uh, then suddenly all the Amazon releases a new feature and everyone's going to That's, <laughs> that's exactly right. People, they may have released what? Amazon Prime, so now you get free delivery. So people are saying, well, wow, if I can get free delivery, I'm not going to eBay anymore. I'm just going to go back to Amazon. And now all of a sudden, their price shoots up again. And finally, at the end, what happens? eBay, uh, eBay and Walmart team up to create a new uh, website. Which forces the price to go down, which now they can compete better with Amazon. So now instead of going to Amazon, we're going to go to Walmart slash eBay no, no. instead of them. Or, or what? E-Mart. E-Mart. That's a good one. All right. Or we can just start our own company and call it E-Mart and we'll mass produce and beat everybody else. What I thought you were going to say is, I thought you were going to say that, um, that Amazon started using drones to bring things to your house and then the uh, government got involved and said, well, the drones are interfering in the airspace, so you can't use your drones. So now they were expected to make all this money. They spent all this money on drones, and now they lost a whole bunch of money because they spent a whole bunch of money on drones, and now they can't use their drones. All right, that's true. True story. All right, but anyway, all right, but anyway, um, that's what you guys are going to have to be able to do. You're going to have to be able to look at a chart or look at a graph and come up with a story about why that happened, or why does the graph, or why does the chart look like that? All right, yes? So are we just writing stories? No, 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 no. All right, here we go. Listen, I, I, I want to go ahead and finish up. So here we go. So number one, it says, the graph re represents the speed of a car as it travels to the grocery store. Now, I would like someone to write a story and explain the graph real quick. Amelia, thank you for volunteering for question number one. Go ahead. Tell me your story now. Yep, you're just going into the grocery store. And this graph represents the speed at which you're traveling to the grocery store. So tell me, what am I doing? Good, very good. Well, I don't know if it hits a few oh, red wait lights. A wait a minute, wait a minute. Does it actually hit a red light or not? No. No, because your speed is never zero. So give me something else. So it sees a donut truck and it wants to follow it, so it speeds up a little. Okay. And then it's going really fast, and then it pulls That's, that's pretty good. Okay, can you, can you all right. However, however, listen, you don't have to write all that. Just stop and listen. This part right here, what, what, somebody else give me another story for that. Tell me. Yeah, you're like on the interstate or something, right? And all of a sudden you're going 50 miles per hour for an extended period of time. But from here, you actually were getting onto the freeway, so you got to speed up. Exactly right. Or you could find a donut truck and get behind a donut truck and follow it to wherever, right? And then you make it to the grocery store, and then at the end you stop, all right? So now I want someone to give me a nice little story about question number two. Now before you raise your hand, make sure you got your story in your mind. All right, Daniel, go. So the person gets a better job. They make more money, 
make more money so that their account goes down. And it keeps that way, even when you for a little while. That's the straight line. And then they do, they, and then they start noticing it. And then that's when they fail. So then they go down. That's exactly a good, that's a good explanation. So listen to what he's saying, right? At first, you start out here. You got some money in your bank, all right? And then as you work, you put more money in the bank, right? And then all of a sudden, you have no more money in the, well, the money, you're not adding money to the bank account. So what probably happens right there? You, you quit and you start. Yeah, you got oh. you got fired or you quit, right? So the money in your bank account stays the same, and then all of a sudden you get a. You win the lottery. Oh, okay. But now the problem with winning the lottery is this: you would get all the money at once, right? So this is saying there's a steady increase. So maybe you got hired by someone else. And now you're back to making money. And then the government comes. And, well, and then the government comes and confiscates your money, <laughs> right? Because you did something bad or illegal. Or, or you can say, well, we were hired and they didn't like you, so they fired you again, right? And so now your money went down to what? Zero. Uh, so, again, listen. The idea is that you're able to take a chart or take a graph and create a story about what exactly happened. All right, that's what we're doing. Yes. Did you write this down? No, no, don't write it down right now. All right. Um, maybe tonight there'll be a problem where you have to write yourself a little story or whatever. But that's okay. Um, but right now, I'm just trying to show you how to interpret, right? How you would interpret each of these graphs. All right. And the last one, who's a baseball player? All right. So the baseball player, here you go. Tell me about this graph right here. Go ahead. All right. So the pitcher pitches the ball, and then they hit it, but then what you hear is really good. So it goes up to where the road is going, and then it stops to where the road is going. So uh, where did the ball hit the ground? Um, so here's here's what you're telling me. So you hit the ball right here, right? You hit the ball in the air, and then down here it hits the what? Ground. It hits the ground. Perfect. All right. Does everybody see that? That's not a bad explanation. All right. But let me ask you something. When you hit the ball, why wasn't it on the ground? Yeah, because the baseball's not on the ground when they pitch it, right? So when you hit the ball, you're going to hit the ball while it's in the air, whether it's three feet in the air or four feet in the air or however tall you are, all right? Then you hit the ball, and it travels up and then hits the ground. Now, listen, I do want to tell you something. Um, this actually is the flight path of all objects when you throw something. When you throw something, it follows a parabola, right? Or we can say a quadratic. Even when you shoot like a bullet, all right, out of a gun, believe it or not, the bullet travels in an arc, all right, or a parabola. That's why on occasion I don't really follow baseball, but every once in a while I like to look up some information. Um, when they had the homeroom derby and the guy would hit, and they said, oh, that went 472 feet. I'm going, how do you know that went 472 feet? Because the ball because, has a thing on it. No, because, listen to me, here's how they know. Because they know how fast the ball is traveling, or they can measure that, and they can measure the, uh, the velocity. And if you know a few things, then they can predict or they can tell exactly how far the baseball would go. All right? And again, that's all just physics, or right? it's all physics, and it's all easy to do, and it's all easy to figure out, which we'll hopefully be able to do in a couple of years. All right, yes? So if I took a slow-mo video of me doing this, it would go up first? Well, no, not if you throw it directly on the ground. But, but, when, you, but when you throw it, right, the, it, from here, watch what I'm saying, from here, it, will, it can follow a problem. Yes, absolutely. All right. It's called free falling. All right. That when you 
throw something, it has to take the, the uh, an arc. All right. Um, now, what I want to do for you guys is how much time do we have? Five. Um, we have twelve minutes. Like twelve minutes. Okay. So now, listen. I think that was a pretty good explanation with everything. So. Um, I'm going to leave you with this. This is your assignment. Let's do, um, let's do, yeah, this is all very easy, guys. You can do these three worksheets. It's very easy, all right? It's not that much, all right? So I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to finish this up now. And now when you have some time left, right, I want you to work together if you want. Yeah. All right, it doesn't have to be quiet. I want you guys, if you want to work together, you can. All right, it's not necessary, but again, I think this is a pretty easy assignment. All right, so I want all three of these worksheets done. Should we do this? Well, we don't do the last thing. Yes.